Okay. I, I would so. like to thank the organizers for this, for the great job they did. Okay. And thank you for the invitation. I am very pleased, pleased to be here. Okay. It's a pity that the conference is in visio. I, I would have liked to uh, a conference in Russia because, because I never visited Russia. That's not a problem. I am also honored by the to close the talks of this conference. Okay, thank you. Well, uh, this is a joint work with Bertrand Lotz and uh, Richard Rydritsky, okay, which uh, was published last year in Annal of l'Institut Henri Poincaré. Okay, then in my talk, I will give the main result of this work, okay, and also some related works. Okay. Before entering in the details, I have to, to introduce some basic objects in order to understand my talk. We have omega is a smooth bounded set in RD. Mu dv is a velo uh, the measure on, on omega is just the Lebesgue measure, the x. And we have a velocity measure, okay, on RD. We should have in mind that in kinetic theory, uh, we have two variables. The phase space is composed by x a position and v a velocity. Okay. Uh, this object will play a key role in my talk. Gamma plus is the set of x v where x lives in the boundary and v is a velocity such that the scalar product is positive. This is the outgoing part of the phase space. Gamma minus is the incoming part of the boundary of the phase space, and gamma naught is the uh, tangential part of the phase space. And of course, the product of the boundary and RD is the union of these three sets. Okay. Uh, the classical Boltzmann equation for, for dilute gas describes the evolution of the density of particles located at X in omega with velocity v in rd at time t according to suitable dynamic. Okay, We have here the, derivative, the time derivative. Here we have the scalar product of the velocity and the gradient with respect to the x variable. It's just a directional derivative. Okay, And j here is a quadratic operator describing the binary collision of particles. Well, the the, bound, uh, the, the phi minus and phi plus, phi, 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 the trace of phi on gamma minus, I mean the incoming part of particles and the outgoing part of particles are related by a suitable operator, boundary operator. Okay. Mm -hmm. Of course, in kinetic theory, there are many, many linear or nonlinear equations, neutron transport equation, Vlasov equation, Boltzmann equation, and so on. All these equations contain this term, this transport term, okay? And in my talk, I will consider only collisionless equation, where we have just the transport term with the boundary, okay? This simple looking equation turns out to be very rich, mathematically speaking. Okay? Uh, it is inter inter interesting in itself, and it is also interesting because it, a good understanding of this equation uh, would be a good step for the understanding of more complex kinetic equations. Okay, from the physical point of view, the physics behind this equation is quite simple. We have particles which move freely in straight line, okay, with velocity v until they reach the boundary. Then a fraction of particles is reflected inside of the domain according to some reflection law, typically a specular reflection. And the other fra fraction is reflected randomly in omega, inside omega, according to some probability law. And the process continues. The boundary operator Describe these reflection events. A priori, the boundary operator should be mass preserving. Okay. And there's, then we are faced with two basic questions. The first question is Is the total mass preserved? 
this equation has to do with the well posedness of this equation uh, by means of a stochastic operator. Okay, it's a problem in itself, as I will show you in, in a minute. The second question is about what about time asymptotics? This question has to do with the existence of uh, invariant density. And if we have an invariant density, uh, uh, can we say that solution converge to the invariant density? If the invariant density, if we have no invariant density, what is the behavior of the mass? Okay. There is also another question which is not the object of my talk. Can we expect quantified rate of convergence for suitable initial data? My talk is, in my talk, I focus on the, two, on the first two questions, but at the end of my talk, if I have time, in the time, I will say some words about the third question. Yes. Uh, kinetic equations, uh, the, the such problem arise in kinetic equations, but they arise also in, in the probabilistic literature on stochastic billiard. Okay. And there is an important literature on this topic. Okay. I don't comment on this literature because I, I am not really an expert on the subject. Okay. Well, uh, I have to present the boundary space. I have presented what is gamma plus. Gamma plus is the outgoing part of the phase space. Okay. The measure on this space is this one. It is the product of the surface measure of omega, the velocity measure, and this weight, which plays a K rule. Okay. Okay. And these spaces play a K rule in, in this construction. Okay. Uh, the natural functional space, sub partial subolev space in transport theory is the following. The function in L1 such that this directional derivative is in L1 endowed with this natural norm. It turns out that a function in W has a trace, but the trace is not in the natural space L1. It is just L, L, L1 lock, okay? But if the trace on gamma plus is in L1, then automatically it on gamma minus it's L1. Okay. There is an, um, many results on this on this question by uh, well-known result by Michel Cessena. Okay. But I, I don't need to 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 speak more on the, this topic. We have just to have in mind that a function is W has not a trace in L1, but just in L1 log. Okay. The stochastic boundary operator, okay, it is stochastic, okay, it is integral preserving, okay, is, okay. Uh, let me give you a generation result. We introduce this operator, T and TH, okay, which act in this, it is just di directional derivative, okay. And its domain is the function in L1 such that this direction in L1, that in W, but in addition, the trace on gamma plus should be in L1, the trace on gamma minus in L1, and the two traces are related by H, okay? In multidimensional geometry, okay, TH need not be a generator, but there exists a unique extension of TH will generate a minimal positive contraction. We know this semigroup by UH. This semigroup need not be stochastic, even if the boundary operator is stochastic. It is stochastic if and only if the generator is precisely the closure of TH. Okay. We say that UH is honest if A is the closure and dishonest otherwise. This pathological situation can occur, okay? I give you some references on the subject, classical references. This is the habilitation of Jürgen Vogt, okay? Uh, a paper by Arlo T. Lotz on, on substochastic semigroups in, in the spirit of this talk, okay? I wrote also a paper and some years later, okay. There is also a paper by Arlotti and Lotz also in the, on, on the subject. Just few references, okay. Okay. 
I have to, to present some basic object, the, the exit time function. The exit time function is the time for a particle initially at x with velocity v to reach the boundary, okay, with velocity minus v. T plus is the time for a particle initially at x to reach the boundary with the, okay, some auxiliary operator, okay. M lambda is just a transport of information from L1 minus to L1 plus. We have a function defined at u, defined on L1 minus, and we can wield the function defined on L1 plus just by trans transferring the information from gamma plus to gamma minus by this flow, okay? This, this operator play a key role in my analysis, in particular for lambda equal zero. Okay, there is another operator, similar operator, which is some think like a lifting operator. We have a function on the boundary on L1 minus, and we build a function inside the domain, okay, okay. such that its trace on L1 minus is precisely U, okay. Okay, such operator. M lambda is always a contraction, okay. There is another auxiliary operator, J lambda, Okay, J lambda is in from L1 to L1 plus. Okay. We have a function. Actually, this, 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 this function has a, has a dictionary derivative in L1. So it is in the space W, but its trace on gamma minus is zero. And then it trace on gamma plus is in L1, according to the Cessna trace I mentioned before. And then we take the trace on gamma plus which is in L1, okay? And finally, we have R lambda, which is just the resolvent of T0. T0 is just, uh, it corresponds to H equals, equals zero, okay? Well, J lambda is a contraction, R lambda generate a contraction semigroup, and we have this, okay, well, in particular, M lambda, and J lambda extend to lambda equal, equal zero as a stochastic operator, okay? If the integral of U, this is M0, M0 U, U. We transfer the information from gamma minus to gamma plus, okay? The integral on L1 on gamma plus is equal to the integral on, L, on gamma minus, okay? And we have something similar for J lambda, for, for J zero. Well, I would like to give some remarks on the, on the generation result. We first take as boundary operator RH, okay? RH, the, the, the RH is a contraction, strict contraction. And then it is not very difficult to show that, that TRH generate a contraction semigroup and the resolvent is given by this series and the series converge in operator norm thanks to R less than one. Okay, it's a contraction semigroup. And then when lambda goes to one monotonically, we, by the monotone convergence theorem, we capture a C0 semigroup, okay? And the generator has, resolve, has as a resolvent this series. But you should be careful, this series converge only strongly, okay? Because M lambda ash is not, its spectral radius could be one, okay? Well, uh, let me give some remarks, okay? If we consider the resolvent of A applied to F, then phi is in domain of TH if the series converge. This series is different from the previous one. In the previous one, we have this operator here. When this operator is present, the series is always convergent, okay? But here, if the series converges without the previous operator, then we capture something in the domain of TH, okay? If we want something in the domain of the closure, we just need that the L1 norm of this term of the series goes to zero, okay? If we want that A is precisely the closure of TH, then we need that this limit is zero for any F, in which case, of course, 
UH is a stochastic operator. Okay. In the dishonest case, A is a proper extension of the closure. Okay. And then this, uh, sorry. Okay. This 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 series this sequence is uh, is decreasing, okay, and then it has always a limit, okay, okay. We obtain this limit, and this amounts to some the existence of some functional one, okay, which is the limit of this of this iterative sequence, okay, and then this limit is equal to this, okay. And the mass loss occurs if the functional is not zero, provided that phi is strictly positive almost everywhere. Okay. The, the ideas behind this boundary perturbation theory are in the spirit of the additive perturbation theory initiated by Kato in his classical paper on Kolmogorov differential equation. This paper has been revisited and used much later by many people working on kinetic equations and even in a non-commutative context by Brian Davis, okay? And also in the subsequent literature by expert on quantum dynamical semigroups, okay? This paper by Cato is, uh, is really a wonderful paper, which is uh, still inspiring. Uh, let me give you some references on some functionality references on, uh, on, uh, on sorry, on this honesty theory, okay? We have a paper by uh, Focht on substochastic semigroups in abst abstract substochastic semigroups, a paper by Frozale, Van der Meer, Mugeli, okay? There is also the monograph by Banaschek and Arlotti, which gives the state of the art at that time. This monograph contains many contribution by Banaschek and uh, his collaborators, okay? After I, uh, uh, New improvements were obtained in collaboration with Jürgen Vogt in this paper, okay? And this paper has also a non-commutative version, which is really in the same spirit. And there are also uh, new developments by Wong, okay? Okay, just some references, okay? Okay, we come back to my, to the problem in kinetic theory, okay? This series, of course, the problem is in general, the, the generator is not known. It is hidden behind this series. But even if we have not uh, a precise knowledge of the generator, this series allows to check the irreducibility of the semigroup, which is useful property to be used later. Okay. The nice case. The nice case is uh, first we have to note that the norm is always less than one less or equal to one. If the spectral radius is less than one for positive lambda, then we have a very nice situation where the generator is precisely th. And the resolvent is given by the, by the, series, the previous series, which converts in operator norm, okay? Well, but uh, what about honesty? Honesty means that uh is stochastic or equivalently, A is the closure of, T, of TH. We have an honesty if, we opt, we, if there exists a super eigenvector of M0H. I, I recall that M0H is a stochastic operator. For instance, if U is an eigenvector associated to one, then we have the closure property, okay? And this shows the importance of the spectral, peripheral spectrum of this operator. Okay, an observation on invariant density, okay? The problem in general is that A is not known, the generator is not known. But if we have the possibility to find an invariant density in the domain of TH, the situation is very, very interesting because we have an invariant density in the domain of TH if and only if one, is an eigenvalue of this stochastic operator. And the corresponding eigenfunction satisfies additional condition. What this condition is, means just that phi divided by the modulus of V is integrable. And H phi divided by the modulus of V is integrable. Okay, these are the additional conditions. 
if one is an eigenvalue of m0, m0, m0h, but the above conditions are not satisfied, then there exists a, po a positive function, which is not in L1, and which satisfies formally this. It is a kind of invariant density, but not exactly an invariant density. OK? Of course, if O1 is an eigenvalue of M0H, M0H, then A is the closure. Yes. OK. Mm -hmm. Well, well, well. Uh, just some notation, additional notation. Gamma plus x, x is in the, on the boundary. Gamma plus x are the velocity pointing, the uh, outgoing velocity at x. Gamma minus x are the velocity, incoming velocity at x. Okay, and gamma zero are the tangential velocity. Okay. Uh, an important feature in kinetic theory is that the interactions are local in space. Okay. So the, the, the boundary operator in, in kinetic theory are a mixture of reflection operator, deterministic reflection, and diffuse reflection. By deterministic reflection is just of the velocity. Okay. R phi is just phi evaluated at the same point, but with another velocity. Okay. Okay. And this velocity has the same modulus. Okay. Uh, th this field preserves the tangential velocity and he has some smoothness. Okay. The usual, the usual, the usual, sorry, the usual uh, reflection are specular reflection, well known, and also the bounce back reflection. Okay. And then we can, this is just uh, the use of Fibini theorem. The integral of phi on L and L1 of gamma plus is the integral on the boundary of the integral in velocity in, out, in outgoing velocity, okay? And then we obtain as the integral over the boundary of the L1 of phi x. We fix x, okay? This is a function in V for, for outgoing V. It is in L1 of this space, okay? And then one can consider the reflection operator just as a field of local reflection of uh, reflection operator, okay? okay? Then it is stochastic, okay? I don't, uh, it is very elementary, okay? Now I want to present the diffuse boundary. By diffuse, I mean that k phi, k phi, K phi is an integral. But we integrate at x, okay? We fix x and we integrate over the outgoing velocity. And the result is a function on, on, on L1 of gamma minus. The kernel is positive and it's stochastic, okay? And as for, as for a reflection operator, okay? This operator also can, can be considered as a field of integral operator field, okay, kx is this integral operator, okay, and this op operator is also stochastic, okay. There is nothing difficult here, okay. By partly diffuse boundary operator, the, the operator arising in kinetic theory has this form. The, the boundary operator is a convex combination of a reflection and of a diffuse boundary operator. And the convex comb combination depends on x, okay? It is local in x, it is very important, okay? These are the partly diffuse boundary operator and by regular, di uh, by regular diffuse operator, I mean that kx is weakly compact. For each, for each x, this operator is weakly compact and this weak compactness is collected in some sense, okay? This is true, for instance, if we have this, this, inf this estimate, okay? Uh, this is the Maxwell diffuse boundary operator used in kinetic theory. It is a kind of rank one diffuse operator, okay? It's very usual kinetic theory, okay? Well, uh, the, the regular diffuse operator have nice approximation property, 
we can approximate them in operator norm by diffish operator having this estimate. Okay. Well, okay. Here is a, a K compactness result. I will give you later if you have I have time enough time the main step of the proof. It's very technical. Okay. This is a, uh, a key point of in this work. Okay. I recall this. Okay. okay. You know this. What is the difficulty of the problem? The difficulty of the problem is that K acts locally in X. It is weakly compact in only in velocity and it is local in X. And M0 has no smoothing effect. It is just a translation of information from the outgoing space to the incoming space. Okay, this is the difficulty of the problem. The proof is very technical. Okay. Okay. I give you now a quasi compactness result. Okay. Beta zero is the infimum of beta. Beta infinity is the supremum. And H is this collision operator. If the oscillation of beta is less than this quantity, then the essential radius of M0H is less than one. Okay. 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 The proof is not the proof is based on the, the weak compactness result. We take the, the, the square of M0H, okay? We develop it, okay? And this operator is dominated by this one, and then it is weakly compact. So the square is a weakly compact perturbation of this operator. But the norm of this operator, okay, and then the, the stability of the essential radius by weakly compact perturbation says that the essential radius of this is equal to the essential radius of this operator. And we, we estimate this by the norm, okay, and it's we end up with this quantity. It's very elementary, okay. And then, if this quantity is less than one, okay, it means that the oscillation is less than this, then the essential radius is less than one, okay. okay. I, I, I remind you that M0H is a stochastic operator, okay. Uh, in the proof, I don't use the fact that air is a reflection operator. It is actually, it can be an arbitrary stochastic operator. Okay, open problems. This oscillation is always satisfies if beta is a positive constant, okay? But we, I strongly conjecture that it is purely technical. This essential radius should be less than one once the infimum of beta is strictly positive. And maybe, probably, once beta x is strictly positive, it means that once the diffuse reflection is active everywhere. Okay, this is a conjecture. What to do with quasi compactness? First, the domain of the generators turned out to be much simpler. Secondly, the existence of invariant density, okay, or the non existence. One can show the existence of invariant density or the non-existence of invariant density, but a precise sweeping effect. Okay. About the generator. If we have this estimate on the, the hypothesis on the oscillation of beta, then TH is the generator. Okay. Okay. What is the proof? It is given in, in, in two or three steps, or two steps, I think. As I told you before, UH, the generator coincide with TH if the spectral radius is less than one, okay? Where M lambda is given by this, but M lambda IH is less than this operator. And this operator, its spectral radius is one. Suppose that the two spectral radius are equal, okay? You have, you have you should have in mind that the spectral radius of this is a rich point because its essential radius is less than one. But by a result of Cassellus, this domination implies that the spectral radius 
of of the, of this one should be a reach point. Okay. If the spectral radius is equal, okay, necessarily this is a reach point. Okay. And now we exploit exploit take advantage of strict comparison result by Evo Marek. The fact that the, the spectral the, the two operators the the spectral radius are uh, reach point and the operator are different. It it implies that the spectral radius of m lambda is strictly less. Okay. Voilà. And then we have we, this finish the proof. Okay. On the existence of invariant density. Okay. The invariant density, as I told you before, it is related to two things. If you want an invariant density in the domain of th, we need that there exists an eigenfunction of m0h associated to one, and phi should satisfy these two conditions, okay? And then if these two conditions are satisfied, then the stochastic operator has an invariant density, okay? It is just corollary, okay? And we obtain that the solution converts strongly to the spectral to the spectral projector, one-dimensional spectral projection. Okay. The proof of this result is just the consequences of general results on partially integral semigroups. Okay. Okay. Uh, Richard Rydnitsky uh, spoke about this in his talk. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay, but what happens if this condition is not satisfied? If if we if we have we have we always have a negative function of m zero h because it is it is uh, quasi compact. But if its eigenfunction function is such that these two conditions are not satisfied, okay, then we have a nice sweeping phenomenon. Actually. It is not the conditions are not satisfied if more or less the integral this integral is infinite. Uh, top plus of x v this time behaves like one over v, okay. And if if this integral is divergent on a set of positive measure, then the sweeping effect we obtain is that the total mass concentrate around small velocities. For any epsilon, okay, the total mass outside small velocities, the mass outside small velocities goes to zero. Okay. Okay, I think I have, uh, wait, let me uh, give the main step of the proof. Okay. We use a criterion by Richard Rudinsky, according to, to which if we have a function which is not integrable, but integrable outside some neighborhood of zero, and moreover, it satisfies this condition, then, okay, then we have sweeping effect. We, we start from the eigenfunction of M0H, which exists, okay? And we build, this is a lifting operator. And we show that this quantity satisfies the, the condition. This, these two conditions okay, are satisfied by this function. Okay? The problem now is to, to check the other condition. And then we approximate a stochastic diffuse operator by, by uh, stochastic diffuse operator having an invariant density. Okay, it's possible to, to, to do this, okay? And then with this additional condition, it's possible to do it, okay? And then one can show that outside any neighborhood, the invariant density converge in operator in, uh, in norm to, to psi, okay? And then not that psi n is an invariant density of U, U, UH, UH n. If we multiply by indicator function, we obtain this inequality. We multiply with this indicator function, and then we can pass to the limit. 
okay, because this converge. Passing to the limit, you obtain this, okay? And then by monotony of in epsilon, we obtain this inequality. And then we obtain this, the, the condition, what is, we obtain this condition, which is very important, okay? Well, mm -hmm. idea of the proof of the weak compactness. This is very technical proof, okay? It is impossible to enter into the details. The first step is that a regular diffuse operator can be approximated in operator norm with diffuse operator having this estimate. And then we can restrict ourselves to diffuse operator, there is the simpler one, this form, okay? And then where F is, has support in spherical shell. In this way, we are not, we have no problem with small velocity or with large velocity, okay? Okay, we need to show uh, the ballistic flow is very important, okay? The ballistic flow is, as you see, okay, uh, it is given by this formula all the time, okay? And the problem with ba this ballistic flow is the following. The K problem is that if XV is on gamma plus, then it may happen that when we go backward, if XV is transverse at gamma plus, this, this point is not necessarily transverse at gamma minus. It may be in gamma zero. And similarly for this, okay? Okay, and then we introduce gamma plus hat, okay, which are the couple of X omega in gamma plus, such that this is in gamma minus, it is transverse, okay? We, we have something similar for gamma minus hat, okay? And we have this theorem. This set gamma plus and gamma minus are open subset. And on this set, these, these exit time are C1, okay? The transversality result, okay, for any X on the domain, on the, on the boundary, sorry, there exists a subset of outgoing velocity, okay, okay, uh, yes, okay, Out, outside which this transformation, okay, is has a differential of rank d minus d. Okay, it's a very very technical point, very important. Okay. Okay. And then I have no time to 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 present all the details. And then to show the weak compactness of this operator, we have to use a denfer petit criterion. We take a, a non-increasing sequence of measurable set such that the intersection is empty. And we have to show that the limit is zero uniformly on the unit ball, okay? Okay, uh, I, I, I skip the details because it's very technical and uh, I want to comment other things, sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, I would like to present some open problems. Okay, uh, the first open problem is about the oscillation. I, I already mentioned this problem, okay? I, uh, I conjecture that uh, th this condition is, is not necessary. I am, I, am, I am very confident that it's not necessary, okay? The construction depends more or less on the quasi-compactness of M0H. In this case, TH is the generator. What happens if we deal with more general diffuse operator? Okay, if TH is not closed, but the closure is the generator, the honest case, the existence of invariant density is an open problem. Okay, and of course, the situation is even worse in the dishonest case. Okay, well, earlier works in slab geometry. In slab geometry, okay, uh, the, uh, the, we, 
I, with, in collaboration with uh, Rydnitsky, we had we uh, built a similar theory, but the situation is much simpler because in, in one space variable, th is always a generator and the compactness problem is are much simpler, okay? After, in collaboration with David Safer, we obtained a, co a quantitative version of this, okay? Of this, uh, this work. Okay. We obtain algebraic rate of convergence, and the, const and the algebraic rates really rely on quantified version of Ingham Tauberian theorem, obtained by uh, by Chill and Safer. Okay. Okay. More recent works uh, with Bertrand Lotz. If the velocities are bounded away from zero, okay, then the transport semigroup has a spectral gap. It means that its essential type is less and the convergence to equilibrium is exponential. This means that the convergence to equilibrium, the problem uh, when the velocities are bounded away from zero, uh, uh, sorry, the problem of the rate of convergence is interesting only if we allow arbitrarily small velocities, okay? With Bertrand Lotz, we have extended the, the quantitative Tauberian approach Okay, uh, the, the one dimensional construction with David Safer. Okay, uh, the extension is quite technical. Okay, and we have also improved the, the, improved the, the rate of convergence. Okay, but the construction depends on the quantified version of Ingham, Tauberian theorem. Okay. okay, recent work. Actually, in kinetic theory, the rate of convergence obtained by quantified version of Ingham theorem are not optimal. Actually, the optimal rate of convergence for the Maxwell model is used in physics was obtained recently by Bernoulli. Okay, and the row, the, the rate is this one. It is almost optimal. If the initial data is such that divided by the modulus of V to the power D plus one, D is the dimension, then the convergence is has this form. Okay. And the proof is very technical. The proof released on the use of Harris subgeometrical convergence theorem by, for Markov process. Okay. More recently, <clears throat> more recently with uh, with Bertrand Lotz. Okay. But only for diffuse model. I means that we have no reflection, deterministic reflection, just diffuse model. Okay. But general diffuse model, we obtain almost optimal rate. If you define n as the maximum of integer k such that k phi to this is in L1, okay? Then for any initial data such that phi over this in L1, the convergence is has this form. If we, if we consider the, the, the sorry, the Maxwell model, the N is just D. Okay. Yes, the N is just D. But the proof does not rely on the quantified version of Ingham, but is based on the new Tauberian approach adapted to kinetic equations. Okay. Sorry, voilà. thank you. So thank you very much for this very interesting talk. So, mm -hmm. so this was the last lecture for conference and I think there are uh, certainly some questions, please. Which, which slide? I'm, I'm, I'm waiting for questions. I'm still waiting for questions by other people. Can I ask a question? Yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, could you comment on such things? Uh, we can consider here that we can have a sweeping of uh, velocity to zero, but another possibility is that we can have a sweeping to the surface of the, to the boundary of this uh, domain. Yes, it's I, 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 possible. 
I uh, think it, it doesn't happen. How, how you exclude it? How to prove that you, you cannot have a sweeping to the boundary? Ah, I have excluded this by using your theorem. <laughs> <laughs> you, you are responsible. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, because the 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 sub eigen function the sub uh, the sub invariant density yeah. is is l1 outside any neighborhood of zero and then the only possible sweeping is mm -hmm. uh, is is uh, around small zero velocity but you, you, uh, this concern only uh, the regular diffuse operator. Maybe for more general kernels, we uh, we obtain more complex sweeping f f phenomena. Mm -hmm. But formally, it is possible uh, in, in the case when the velocity uh, after the collision will be cl uh, closer to the boundary. to the boundary. So if you have such a transformation that you start from some velocity, take the tangent space, and after the collision, the velocity can be closer than ah, Yes, yes, ah, you, your, so your, your remark is pertinent, uh, but because our operator is weakly compact in velocity, then the tangential velocity are, 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 um, are irrelevant. I mean that we, the set is of zero measure. I think that the, the class of, of regular diffuse operator exclude this, this possibility. Mm -hmm. but, but maybe we can, we can build a special uh, diffuse operator, which is not regular, and it allows this ph phenomenon. I think it's, yes. But it's excluded for diffuse operator, for, for regular diffuse operator. Thank you. So I also have a question. Um, namely, you said when you bound the uh, velocity away from z from zero, then you get a, a spectral gap and exponential yes. convergence. Yes. So what happens if you allow for the velocity zero to or result velocity is close to zero and you add a linear collision term? So you consider the collision collisionless equation. But if you have, say, if you allow for the velocity zero, but you add a collision term can inside, this, the inside the equation, inside the equation, can this then reproduce a spectral gap again? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if the spectral gap is uh, is preserved by adding a collision operator inside. Okay. It, it, it isn't clear a priori. Mm -hmm. But okay, it's, like it's, a, it's a nice question, but it's, it's unclear. Okay, okay. One can imagine that the, the addition of a collision operator inside the equation destroys the gap. The gap. Maybe. But may, maybe not. I don't know. Thank you. Okay. Does somebody else have a question? Yes, may I ask a question? Please. Yes. So uh, perhaps I wasn't uh, listening too carefully at the very beginning. Uh, I, uh, I was trying to understand the reason behind um, the semi-group being non-Markov, being sub-Markov. Uh, and so I guess this could be related to the set of velocities. It's probably unbounded, yes? So you may have this collisions with the boundary in shorter and shorter times. Is it the case or is, is there another phenomenon hidden here? Did, did I express I, I, myself? I, yes, yes, I, I, yes I, uh, I, I don't know what is the, the profound uh, reason of this. Because the only reason I could think of was was as follows: he, yes. the part, a particle travels through the region and then hits the boundary, changes yes. the velocity, and this velocity may be, say, twice as uh, as as large as the pre previous one, and then it will go through the region in a 
shorter time and then yes. again is reflected and say again twice as as large velocity and then probably. in a finite time probably the process will will be left undefined but uh, Pro probably i i uh, set of velocities and I, I guess this is the case yes probably probably uh, 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 marta marta wrote a paper on uh, but i think on additive perturbation and she analyzed the 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 problem uh, from probabilistic way mm -hmm. and uh, th there is something about uh, explosion of it from probabilistic point of view and okay. they yes try to answer for, for this question yes i said about such situation when uh, velocity after the collision is closer to the tangent space Okay, then you can have shorter and shorter uh, places when you have you hit. So yes. maybe this is a problem with the def uh, definition of a semi group. You have too many hitting points. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. Mm -hmm. It can happen. I, I, I'm not sure, but I'm trying to answer at this partial of your question. Yeah, but that, that's, you know, I, I was thinking about shorter, I mean, uh, larger and larger velocities, but you can also have the same situation. Exactly. But the uh, points on the boundary being closer and closer. Yeah. So. Ah, yes. Uh, maybe, maybe, uh, Adam, I, I think that maybe this is the reason. Mm -hmm. Not not high velocity. Okay. Okay. But, right. but still, that's, uh, the reason is still the same. You, you have the process un left undefined after infinitely many collisions that take place in a finite time. Yes. Okay, yes, thank yes. you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Great. Are there further questions or comments? Not at the moment. Okay, then.